Now we're going to turn our attention here to looking at combining some substitution with things that involve trig functions. Uh, before we get going here, it's uh, it's going to work. Substitution is going to work th with this the exact same way it did for just power functions. We just have to remember some of our trig integral formulas here, which are just the reverse of some of the trig derivative formulas that we know. Except now that we are looking at where this is a function, right? So that u represents u is a function. Sounds like good English, doesn't it? U is a function. U is a function. <laughs> U is some function here. So it's going to be not just cosine of a variable. It's going to be cosine of x squared plus 2 or something like that. All right? Where that's a function. If you've already changed this to du, then you don't have to worry about it. Once you've done that substitution, this is just sine of u. This is just minus cosine of u. This is just tangent of u. This is just minus cotangent of u. Okay, just all those same things turned around. This is secant of u, and this is minus cosecant of u. Okay, so we're going to put those to work here with our substitution strategy here for working with some integrals. Uh, let's scroll it right down here. If we're going to try and find the integral of that, cosine of a function, we're going to, probably your guess is that that's going to be our u, and you're right, that's going to be our u. If we make u into 7x plus 5, then du is just 7 times dx. du dx is 7, so du is 7 dx. Well, we don't have a 7 dx there. So what you can do, again, you can do it two ways. You can change this so that you do have a 7 dx, like I can go times 7, times 1 seventh here. Or you could just change this around so that it works. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it this way by changing this. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say that 1 seventh du is dx. Because then I can replace dx with what we know it's equal to here, 1 seventh du. 1 seventh du. And then we got cosine of u, because that's what we replaced it with there. Right? Color coded here that, and then we got our integral. If we're going to work out that integral, I'm going to put the, the 1 seventh in front. It makes the most sense. Right? You can do that right off the bat if you want, if you see what you're doing. You can just put the, put the 1 seventh right in the front to make it simpler. If you're going to evaluate that integral, Integral of cosine is sine plus some constant. And of course we have sine, but that's 7x plus 5 plus c. Now you might, uh, again, you might check that by doing the derivative of this, and you'll find you get this the integrand that we started with, the thing we were integrating. Now you might look at a little shortcut for yourself that if you are finding the integral of cosine of a function here, and the function's just a constant times x, you're just going to end up with 1 7th. If it's cosine of 7x, you're going to end up with 1 7th of sine of that function. You can look for some shortcuts. I'm not big on those memorizing those formulas. I'd rather just do it from first principles each time, but but it's, it might be uh, useful if you like that sort of thing. Anyways, the second one that we're going to do here, you have to decide which of these things you're going to make the inside function. Now, the way they write trig functions is this strange thing where, you know, cos to the fourth of x instead of writing actually cos x to the fourth. So cosine's the inside function there. And sine is going to end up being, sine is its derivative. So I'm going to rewrite this so that we can, uh, I'm going to rewrite it this way and put the sine second and then the dx there because if I choose to make cosine into u, then its derivative is sine, so du is sine x dx. And then we can do some replacements there. If we make sine x dx into du, sine x dx becomes du. If we take cos x, that's our u, cos x, that's going to be u here. So we have u to the fourth integral 
du. Integral of u to the fourth du is one fifth u to the five plus c, or in other words, one fifth cos to the fifth plus five. That's what it is. All right. Third one here. This one might be a little bit trickier. Let's create a bit of space here first. Shrink that up a bit. Create some space here and try looking at this one. So if you, if I mean, this looks a whole lot like this one up here, all right? So you might think, okay, this is like, this is like secant x squared times tan x. So that's the inside function, so I'm going to make this into u. The problem is if you do that, if you make u secant x, the derivative of this is secant x tan x, right? So the du is that times dx. But if you change this to u squared then, all you got left over is this tan x. You don't have the right thing there, all right? You don't have the right thing to make this into what you want it to, all right? So probably that's not the, the best choice. There is a way to make that one work if you split this up, and we're going to look at that afterwards. But it isn't always that you want to make the, the u into the thing that has the power or whatever, because I'm going to show you here, if you make if you make u into tan x, it's going to work. Okay, you'll see why. If you make u into tan x, du is secant squared x dx, and just like that it's going to work, right? du secant squared, because secant squared is a derivative of 10. So if you make this integral of u, and then that sec squared dx is du, you've got 1 half u squared plus a constant, which is just 1 half tan squared x plus a constant. Now, before I said that it would have worked if we did secant x, but the way it's going to work is if you split up the secant squared, just write it as secant times secant. Maybe let's move this over here and we can try it again here. Let's let's just move this off of here for a sec. And this as well. If you're going to get this to work by using secant the way I did at the beginning here, then the derivative is secant x tan x. So this is this. If you write this as integral of tan x secant x secant x, right? That secant squared is that. You can do this. You can say secant x is u. So let's say this one's going to be u. And then we, what we've got left over here is secant x tan x dx. Well, that's what we have here. We can replace all of that stuff. So you can say that all that's du. So that whole thing you can make into u du here, right? But what we have here is 1 half u squared plus a constant. But this time we made we had u as secant. Well, that's weird here. Secant squared x plus a constant. Well, how does that make any sense? Because what we had before was, I threw it over here now, right? Way over there somewhere. How can this make any sense where these two things we have 1 half secant squared plus a constant and 1 half tangent squared plus a constant. You can't get two different answers here, so what's going on? Well, I'll tell you what's going on. What's going on is there is a trig identity that relates those two things, and it goes something like this. Secant squared x is 1 plus tan squared x. They're only different by 1, right? Secant squared and tangent squared are different by 1. And since what we have here is we have any constant added on to either one of them, well, those constants can just be one different, and then these two things are identical. So that's kind of a cool little thing that happens there um, when you're doing that. Now, you might probably the first way we did it is the more likely way you're going to do that. And um, either one of those is, is, is correct, right? Now, we should do this last one here, this last one. If you're working through that, uh, there's lots of trig functions there, but 
since that one's inside of another one, uh, probably that's the one you're gonna you're gonna use. Let's get this out of the way here. Move it up. Probably that makes the most sense to try first. Now, if you try it and it doesn't work, try something else, right? If we make this cosecant x, then what do we need as its derivative? We have uh, if you have cosecant, it's minus cosecant x cotangent x dx. We don't have a minus in there, so I'm going to put the minus over here. I'm going to get rid of that minus over there and put it over here. Minus du is equal to positive that. So if I'm going to change this integral, now I can put minus du over here when I do it, but it's easier just to put the minus in front knowing we need to put a minus in there. So we have cosine of u, right? Because we got cosine of that, right? And we have all of this stuff, cosecant x, cotangent x, dx. Cosecant x, cotangent x, all of that becomes du. All of that stuff becomes du. So we've changed that into this much simpler integral. And if we want to work this out, well, that's equal to minus integral of cosine is sine of u plus a constant, or sine of cosecant x plus a constant. That's it. All right. So that's using substitution with some trig functions. All right. We're going to look in the next thing at using identities as well as substitution in a few of these things. All right, that's in the next part.